We have the one, the only, <laughs> Cory Bush! <laughs> I'm this young black girl, I got, you know, wear braids in my head, I'm so unprofessional. I'm a nurse, you know, I'm a pastor. My last name is Bush, like, let's start with that, you know? gonna help run the world, so exactly. you gotta be, you gotta expect a little tune. <laughs> we wanted to go to D.C. just to, first of all, there's a, a lot to do. We have to meet with different members. I am not going to support a package that has a massive corporate bailout mm -hmm. in any way, shape, or form. ALC talked to us just about getting started and just making sure we felt comfortable in this transition period and then still running as a candidate. Corey's family, she represents such an important movement that is now just starting to get an expanded foothold into the United States Congress. She just represents a fidelity to everyday people. Seeing your name on that. You get emotional about that. Did you see it? There's yeah. a video of me doing a selfie video coming in, and I go, oh my god. Because <laughs> every time there was something that made it more real. Yeah. So this is what happens to Craig. It like sinks in more. It just sinks in just a little bit. Because you don't like it just a little bit more it sinks in, then a little bit more it sinks in. And then he's like, oh my God. Like, I can't believe I'm We met with Rashida Tlaib at her office. I was able to speak with her, my team, spoke with her team. She talked a lot about setting things up, you know, getting things started, uh, staffing, which was very helpful. Talib is always so welcoming and just so knowledgeable. She's just tossing out information. I'm, you know, I can ask any stupid question, and you know, and she's answering. <laughs> Before ever running for office, I never really thought much about it because I kind of, I felt like that particular seat was so far from me. And to me, there was kind of like no real way to really connect with my Congress person. We have such a history of police brutality. Like it's nothing new. It is, I think we're in a place now where we're really realizing that it doesn't have to be this way. The National Guard has taken control of Ferguson, Missouri, a city so torn, so tense, it is now essentially militarized. 18-year-old Michael Brown, an unarmed teenager, fatally shot six times, twice in the head, by Ferguson police officer Darren Wilson. He just wanted justice for Michael Brown Jr. That was it. We weren't getting it. And not only were we not getting justice, we were getting brutalized trying to get justice in the process. We're not asking you to feel sorry. We're asking you to feel compelled. We want to see freedom for black folks. Yeah. And you we look at Ferguson and we had no idea that we were starting a movement. We're out here in Ferguson, um, in front of Ferguson Police Department, and uh, you know, we have the police in SWAT gear shooting rubber bullets at us. This is the police force that showed up for the protest. That's when my eyes started to open that something is missing. There is a disconnect and we should have more. I know these streets, you know. This is my, the school, the nursing school I went to. <laughs> I'm going to Washington to represent St. Louis. It just feels like I'm just taking St. Louis back and forth. It's like I have St. Louis, you know, in my bag, <laughs> you know, and so I gotta bring St. Louis to 
you know, to the place where I'm supposed to open the bag. I'm taking my own lived experience to Congress. I'm walking in those doors as a politivist, a politician and an activist. I'm not going to stop being an activist just because I'm, I'll be in Congress. As the activist, it's my job to apply pressure, to bring awareness, to highlight our issues in a very real, clear way. And then as the politician, it would be my job to then use the power of the pen that I have to bring about the change based upon that pressure. So right now, actually, I have um, some phone calls I need to make, just different things, because it's more than what you can do in a day. Later this afternoon or this evening, I have the Senator Marquis live stream and then the DSA. Um, I think my family's gonna come in and hang out for a while. So today should be a good day. Fighting for the rights of all, of all people, making sure women's rights are intact. I'm a pro-choice Democrat. My platform consists of criminal justice reform, police accountability. It was hard as heck to pay my student debt, but I don't want other people to go through what I went through trying to pay theirs down. And so I'm fighting to get it, get it canceled, totally wiped out, whether you went to school in 1979 or you're in school now, totally wipe it out. $15 an hour, federal minimum wage, Medicare for all, healthcare is a human right, each and every person. All right, this is my dad, Earl Bush, and this is my sister, Kelly Bush. This is my son, Zion, my nephew, Kyrie, and this is my brother, Perry. This can be such a lonely work, you know, so it's good to have family that's there to support. <laughs> it's gonna be the everyday people that's going to be blessed from her being in this seat right now. These mm -hmm. women that said, you know, no, that's, she sounds like me. Mm -hmm. She sounds like the person that I've been going through all the time. And she looks like me. So I'm voting for her. And that's what a lot of people told me on election day. I had all of these dreams. And my family did too. Just being a black girl in a white, very, very, very white community. It destroyed my confidence. But what came out of that though, just looking back, you know, I went through a very dark place, a lot of domestic violence, you know, almost lost my life at the hands of an abusive partner um, who, left, who um, left me for dead. I can speak to what happens when a person is, um, is sexually abused and goes forward and does everything that the system tells you to do and you still don't get justice. It's an honor. I mean, we're all trying to work together. My son is 20 and my daughter is 19. My children have watched me go through a lot. They've seen me go through things. Uh, and then the protests, you know, they, they were there for the, um, at protests. Husband and wife attorneys charged with pointing guns at protesters. They were simply trying to protect their home. We wanted to see justice for a baby, and I'm saying a baby because my son is older than Mike Brown was when he laid here on this ground. My kids are, they've just seen me go through so much. They saw me, you know, they went through it with me as I ran twice, and they know how much I sacrificed, how much they sacrificed. The second race in 2018, it was a bigger deal. People did know my name more that time. It probably wasn't easy for them to be like, okay, your mom is a loser, you know? It had to be hard. Um, and then just them watching me go through all that I went through, you know, after losing. What assumptions do I believe people make as me as a candidate? Some people feel like this was easy for me. They feel like we just had all of this help that just kind of came from out of nowhere. 
people think that it's like this great thing, like, oh, like, you know, oh, she has a great life. <laughs> you know, I lost a lot. I remember after my first race, I came home after the watch party. One of the staff dropped me off at home and I couldn't find my car. And I just remember like thinking, what happened to my car? Did someone steal my car? It turns out it was repossessed. People just don't understand. They have this misconception that people are doing all of these things for you. Everybody has their own job, their own thing to do. So, you know, nobody is taking care of you. I'm coming, I'm coming. I'm here. Okay. Thank you for hosting this, Senator Markey. We are, you know, it, it was great watching you win. And uh, I'm just so excited that we're all, not only did we win, but we're connected. We deserve so much more than what we even know is available. Like that's the thing, like there are so many, there's so much available to us that I just, we just didn't even know. We have gone through a lot, we've seen a lot. I can say that most of the people that started out with us are still with us, you know, and that says a lot about just the change that people want to see. When they tell you that you don't have a voice, when they tell you that you are not powerful, when they tell you you have to sit back and wait your turn, when they tell you you haven't done enough, you don't look the part, sound the part, didn't come from the right place, don't have the right money, don't have the right title, didn't do it right, didn't, when they tell you all of those things, you don't have the right family, you're not from the right place, when they tell you all of those things, push forward, keep moving, keep going, keep learning, keep educating yourself, keep stay active, keep pushing, because when you push, you get to the place where you win. The only way you don't win, the only way we don't get to the goal of our issues and our, uh, our needs being met is when we quit. So don't quit. You have power. It's within you. Link up with other people. Let's do this and we can win all of this together.